a brief introduction to um, Hesiod um, and excerpts we have in our book uh, from his two of his poems, um, Theogony, which means birth of the gods and works and days. Um, starts off with uh, invoking the muses, uh, which are the spirits who uh, of the arts, uh, who he says inspire poetry. Um, as well as all, all sorts of human wisdom. Um, who uh, sing beautiful songs, line about 11, to exalt Aegis bearing Zeus. Now, an Aegis is a shield. Um, and queenly Hera. Uh, he says, they taught me these songs. Uh, as he uh, tended his sheep uh, on the, the foot of the mountain uh, helicon where the muses are believed to uh, live. But look at the character of the muses as he describes what they say. Line 26. Listen, you country bumpkins, you pot-bellied blockheads. We know well how to tell many lies that pass for truth. And when we wish, we know to tell the truth itself. Can you trust what they say about the gods? <laughs> the Greek gods are... Um, Are certainly not moral exemplars. They are, uh, they are like human beings, except they don't die and they're more powerful. And he tells us the story of origins. Um, and how the muses inspire uh, the wisdom of kings uh, to to govern well, and really all of the human talents, um, page 37, music uh, and dance, etc. Um, but he, he's telling us here this, the, where the gods came from, how they came to exist. Uh, and and um, it begins with chaos, emptiness, and then Gaia, the earth. Now, beginning about line 126, Gaia gave birth first to starry Uranus, Uranus, the heavens. She gave birth to tall mountains enchanting haunts of the divine nymphs who dwell in the woodlands. She bore Pontus, the barren sea with its raging swell. All these she bore without mating in sweet love. Okay. She has her first children without a father. But then she did couple with Uranus to bear ocean and the 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 first generation of, of gods uh, the last of whom Kronos um, but why why do the children hate their father Uranus line 155 what does he do with each of the kids when they're born stuffs it back into Gaia's womb and did not let it return to the light huge Gaia groaned within herself 
Um, now, my wife and I have three kids. Okay. So I, I, I know about as much as a man can know about pregnancy. Um, my wife was not interested in having them put back once she got them out. You know, uh, uh, ladies, if you've had children, you know that the, the last couple months of a pregnancy are pretty tough. You get tired of hauling all that weight around in your belly. And so she comes up with a plan. And she makes a sickle, this curved blade that was used to, to harvest grain. Uh, and she um, she gives that to um, Kronos, who says that he will uh, he'll take care of this situation. And so when Uranus, line 176, came dragging with him the night longing for Gaia's love, Kronos reached out from her womb with that sickle, line 180, and hacks off Uranus's genitals and throws them as far as he can. And when they hit the water, um, that is where Aphrodite, the goddess of love, comes from. Uh, Aphrodite, uh, who um, from whom come line 205, young girls whispers and smiles and deception and honey sweet love and its joyful pleasures. Nice characters, these gods, huh? Now, what we have, the, the second excerpt from Works and Days is a, a description of uh, the, the, the story of how human beings uh, got control of fire. One of the titans, uh, Prometheus, uh, steals it from Zeus uh, and gives it to human beings. Uh, and page 40, uh, Zeus wants to get back at people for having uh, control of fire. And so he, um, he calls Hephaestus, the, the blacksmith of the gods, um, to make a woman. Athena, goddess of wisdom, teaches her skills in weaving. Aphrodite makes her attractive with stinging desire and limb gnawing passion. Um, Hermes, the messenger of the gods, uh, puts in her the mind of a bitch in a thievish nature. And so all the, god, the gods and goddesses work to fashion um, this creature called Pandora. the gift of the gods to men, mankind. Because she really represents all women. And um, human beings don't accept the warning of Prometheus never to accept a gift from Zeus. Send it back because his gifts are not something you want to have. And we'll see what happens um, as a result. Uh, of uh, of this gift, human beings
she brings this jar um, that when she opens it, turns loose all the griefs and cares of life. The only thing that stays in the jar is hope. This is not a good gift. Back to the top of page 40, line about 10. The price for the stolen fire will be a gift of evil to charm the hearts of all men as they hug their own doom. <laughs> you know, all a man's troubles come from women. That's what he's saying. As your textbook puts it, somewhat misogynistic. Now, the other part of this that's that's important is his his vision of history, uh, divided into ages. Um, first, the 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 golden age. Uh, the, the at the beginning, uh, there was there was no pain. Uh, people lived a long time and then simply went to sleep. Um, This is, beginning on page one, page 41, the age of gold when Kronos was king before Zeus. Um, the king of the gods has a way of being deposed by his own son. Kronos de destroyed Uranus. Um, Zeus then defeats Kronos. Um, human beings... Um, live like gods, no pain, you didn't get old and, and, and um, would, uh, you, you stayed young and active until you, you reached the end of your life and you simply went to sleep. Um, the second race of men is silver. Now, gold is more valuable than silver, right? So, you see which way this is going, right? This is going downhill. Uh, Hesiod is the ultimate conservative. Things were better way back then, and everything has been getting steadily worse ever since. Um, the, the Silver Age um, was not as good as the Golden One, but still pretty good. You know, they had a long, long childhood and adolescence. Um, but, you know, when they reach adulthood, it, it's pretty much over. Uh, the third age is the age of bronze, even less valuable. Um, going, st again, going steadily downhill. The age of the heroes, Oedipus, and the heroes of the Iliad and all of that, um, Hesiod sees himself living among the fifth race of men, and he wishes he had, um, he, he didn't. Um, the current age, the, the race of iron, um, it's, it is terrible. Um, Children are born gray at the temples. <laughs> you know, they're born old. Children will not resemble their fathers. Now, what does that suggest? You know, when, when uh, our first child was born, um, she looked exactly like my baby picture. Um... Uh, you know, uh, it's a good thing we were married because it, it, if my wife had had to sue me for child support, I would not have had a prayer. Um, there will be no affection between guest and host. Um, you know, hospitality was 
maybe the most important virtue in the ancient world. You'll see more of that as we go through the Iliad, get to the end of the Iliad. Um, sons and daughters are disrespectful. People are, are lawbreakers, warlike, evil, dishonest, crooked, envious. I mean, people, people in this fifth age are horrible. Uh, and, and this this vision of history has had tremendous influence. Um, this idea that things are going steadily downhill, you still see that in people's outlook. Um, especially, as I say, conservatives. Um, you know, the idea... Um, that uh, that got Trump elected in 2016, that there was some point in in the past when America was great, and we have to get back to that um, when America was was perfect and pure, you know. And and I keep wondering when that time was, you know, was it when we were importing slaves from Africa, when we were exterminating the Native Americans? Was it the Jim Crow era? Was it the time when I was born, the 1950s, when it was illegal in many southern, in all the southern states, for black and white people to eat together? You and I couldn't go in the same restaurants? Was that when we were great? You know, I have to say, I don't buy this this idea that we're devolving. We're changing. I think some of the changes that I've seen in my lifetime have been for the better. Some for the worse. Some are a mixed bag. You know, cell phones are immensely convenient, but they suck your brains out. Think about the character of Hesiod's gods and how that is reflected also in Homer's Iliad and the influence of this system of ages. <laughs>